Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So today I want to talk about a new video that came out. It's called Martin Parr, The Last Workshop. I received an email from Magnum last week. And because I purchased the video, The Art of Street Photography, they gave me access to watch this new video by Martin Parr. And what it is, it's about two hours long, and it's a video on one of his workshops. And what I want to do is I want to explain some of the things that really stood out to me and to explain why I'm recommending this product. It's a fantastic video. I highly recommend it. And one thing I want to mention here too is that when I make recommendations, I'm very picky about what I suggest artists and photographers purchase because whenever I've bought something in the past and I feel like I haven't got my money's worth, it makes me angry and there's nothing worse than feeling like you got ripped off. So I don't have any issue returning books and I've done it many, many times over. When I buy a book from Amazon and I feel I haven't got my money's worth, I return it. And fortunately, Amazon's really great about that. I don't know about other companies, but that is a big deal for me. So, But anyway, let me go through a few things about this video that really stood out to me that might help the photographer to take better photographs and to decide whether or not they want to invest the money in this video. I believe it's $99.00. And like I said, it's roughly two hours long, but let me get into this. All right, the way the video is structured, basically what it is, it's a condensed version of Martin Parr's workshop. And the first thing he does with his students is he critiques their work. Now, he doesn't show all the students that attended their work in this video. I want to say he talks to maybe three or four and this video is a very condensed version of his workshop. So, but what's interesting to me about his reviews of other photographers' work that is that attend his workshops, he is an amazing uh, evaluator. He does not insult the student. And one thing that I have noticed with other workshops, and I've taken several, and I've gotten several reviews by... I got one by Constantine Manos, I got one by Mar Mary Ellen Mark, and I got one from Myron Barnstone. The review I got from Manos was awful, and it was mean. And one thing that I noticed with some of these reviewers, they're mean. They don't know how to talk to the student that comes there to learn. And a lot of times they insult them, they make them feel stupid, and this isn't just my own experience, I've heard from others the same. So... One thing that really stood out to me about this video with Martin Parr, he was exceptional when it came to reviewing a student's work. He pointed out things that could be improved, but he didn't make the photographer student feel like they were completely incompetent. He gave suggestions. He pointed out things that could be improved. But again, he didn't talk down to the student. He pointed out things that were good about the photographs. And that is really important because when I'm reviewing others' work, I do the same thing. You can't tear down somebody when they're bringing their work to you for review because it leaves them feeling helpless and hopeless. And it happened to me when I got my review from when I got my review from Constantine Manus. I went home and I threw out all my photographs. It was absolutely devastating. And I swore that if I ever got back into this and I felt competent enough to review others' work, I would never talk down to a student like that. I am very firm on my beliefs about design, but that's not the same thing. I've reviewed other photographers work in the past and they told me how good I am when it comes to that. And I'm very aware of how to help people when it comes to improving what they already know and taking their work a step further. And this is not a plug for me to do reviews. It's simply just from my own experience that I've learned that you really have to be careful about how you talk to people when it comes to their work, whether it's a drawing, painting, or a photograph, or whatever. All right, so that is critical for me. And I, I'm i very bold about staying. I'm not a huge fan of photography workshops, but I think Martin Parr is fantastic, and I think it would be worth taking a workshop with him, along with Bruce Barnbaum. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is 
One thing I noticed about the photographer's work that I really want to point out here. So when the video was going through the photography students talking about their work, one thing stood out to me. And that is photographers tend to have tunnel vision. And I took all weekend and I thought about this. And I thought about what was it like for me to photograph before I started studying art and design and so on. And it was such a long time ago, it took me a while to remember what it felt like when I was photographing. And one thing that is reoccurring with photographers is that they had tunnel vision, and myself included, before I learned design. And what I mean by that is in all of the examples, well, I should say most of them, not all of them, but in a lot of the examples that were demonstrated in the critique, the photographers, they were focused in on their subject, but they ignored the background. And it's so easy to do when you're looking through the viewfinder of a camera. So you have to be aware of everything that fills your frame. It can't just be about the subject. And I see this a lot with street photography. One of the students, he was talking about a street photography and he made a comment. He said, I don't have time to focus on composition. So I just take the photograph. Unfortunately, I, I under, let me just say this. I understand what he's talking about. He, you can't memorize lines. You can't Think about design in, in the same way the artist would that goes to the canvas. And I've talked about this a thousand times over. And that's true. But you can't disregard composition either. You can't put it aside for a later date because what you end up with is a collection of photographs that don't work. And like I said, I understood where it was coming from. But when you're out photographing, you have to be aware what is filling your frame. What's in the background? It's not just about what you're looking at. How is your subject fitting within that background? Are there any distracting elements in that frame that will take the viewer away from the subject that you're photographing? Is there too much? Is there too much clutter? And I talk about this a lot when I'm evaluating. When I go on Magnum and I talk about what a great photograph is, I'm talking about overlapping. I'm talking about figure ground relationship. How does the subject read against this background? And how does your subject fit within that frame, whether it's a square or one five, it doesn't matter. Everything in that frame matters. So in my user's guide for the art of photography, I list a series of techniques that the photographer should be aware of. Now, you're not thinking about this in detail when you're photographing, but you have to be aware that when you're looking through the viewfinder, you understand what you're capturing to some degree and you have to have a knowledge of design of what makes a good photograph and that's why I teach the information that I do in the way that I do to photographers because I want them to understand that everything in that frame matters. Everything. There's nothing in that frame that doesn't matter. It's how the elements are arranged, how they're balanced out, how your subject reads against the background and so on. And that's a reoccurring theme that I noticed with all of these students' work. They had great ideas, fantastic ideas, but the backgrounds ruined the photographs. And Martin Parr was talking about that as well, and he pointed out a few photographs that were very good. And when he demonstrated the ones that were good, I knew right away, these work. Because after years of training and studying design, you have a familiar, you become familiar with what makes a good photograph. And Martine Frank talks about this in her notes on design. Photography is in many ways intuitive, but you have to understand what makes a good photograph a good photograph. And there are good photographs and there are bad photographs. And it's important to realize that. Okay, the next point that Martin Parr made, which was really important, and one that I have stressed time and time again on my video lectures as well, take more than one photograph. When the students were showing their work, I could tell they could have developed it further. And I did a review not too long ago with another photographer, and I made the same comments. Take more photographs. Work the scene. You have the idea down, but you have to work it through. And in the video, The Artistry of Photography, Richard Calvar talks about that, and he demonstrates that in one of his photographs. There was a photograph that he took where an older woman was looking through a window on the street. 
I believe it was about 15, 10 to 15 photographs that he took to get that one shot. You have to work what you're looking at because very rarely can you ever get a masterpiece in one photograph. And I know there's photographers that claim they can. I don't buy it. And when I review their work, it's very apparent that that's not true. Now, occasionally you can. There are times when I've taken one that I feel I got an acceptable shot. And it does happen. But because it's so rare, you want to, if you can, work the scene. And Martin Parr was talking about that over and over. He says, shoot a lot of rubbish. And the reason he says that is because when you shoot a lot of bad stuff, you're going to eventually get something that isn't bad that is actually good. So he tells his students, shoot a lot of rubbish. And that's what he's saying. You need to shoot more. You need to work the scene, work it from different angles. You have the idea, you have the interest when you come across something that interests you. And of course, every situation is going to dictate how much you can work that scene. And you will get a feel for that as a street photography, as a street photographer. But you do have to work that scene if you can. All right, the last point that I want to make and the recommendation that Martin Parr made in his workshop, and I agree with this, and that is to find a project. For example, in my own work, I've worked with the American Red Cross for years. And to me, that is a project. And the reason I do it is because it helps document what the American Red Cross is doing, all the good work they're doing, but at the same time, it allows me to get better in my work, it allows me to build a portfolio, and it helps me to learn. When you have a project, you have a goal in mind. And I'm a bodybuilder, and whenever I go to work out, I write everything down, and I set goals for myself. And the reason I do that is because I want to improve. And I do the same thing in my own work. And this is where Creating a project will help the photographer become a better photographer. When you have a project, you have an idea, you have a goal in mind, and you can work that project. There was a girl in the class that was did a series of photographs of fishermen, and I believe it was in Maine, if I'm not mistaken. But he said, and I recommend this too, go back, because you're familiar with these people now, go back and shoot more. And this is what I do with the Red Cross. I've shot, I would say, 50, at least 50 or so events with them over the past few years, and I have a large collection of images. I don't show them all on my website, but there's a few in my user's guide. But my point is, that's my project that I do. I I do other stuff as well, but I always have a project going when I'm photographing. I was doing a series of images in the in the light of William Eggleston. I was taking very mundane subjects and using design to make them interesting. That's another project that I'm working on. Projects give you focus. And when you have focus, you can produce a more consistent body of work. But I hope this review helps. It's a fantastic video. I highly recommend it. And again, I think it's $99. But if you have any questions about it, drop me an email. And thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.